This is the last case in our exhibition, and it features uh, the personal archive of a commercial photographer, portrait photographer from Bloomington, Illinois, named Oscar Martin. Just as our first case started with a identification of a sort of a field of photographic practice, a range of practices from Robert Frank, who we might consider as an art photographer for the time being, to Ozzy Sweet, a commercial photographer, this case uh, closes with a look at a photographer who, in a small town, would have perhaps had the role of not only the local portrait photographer, but also as an advanced amateur photographer. And one of the interesting questions about this exhibition, or I hope the, the question this exhibition poses, is how do we identify the sort of the range of photographic practices at this time period? I think it's a useful exercise to maybe first sort of establish an overall range of practice. Um, and then, as we did in the second case, the diverse practices case, hone in on a specific sort of subfield, in this case, the practice of art photography, and then start to identify the range within that subfield. Within the realm of the advanced amateur and commercial photographer, within the context of this larger exhibition, perhaps the most interesting question is, what sort of communication or relationships existed between photographers like Oscar Martin and photographers uh, who were practicing within the field of artistic production? And that's a difficult question to answer, but there are some tips and they are included um, in this archive which has photographs as well as literature. Once again, literature is our, is our starting off point. Within the Martin Archive, there are a number of sort of technical journals. And these would have been used by any photographer, regardless of the field within which they work. Um, for example, we have a photo lamp lighting and data book from GE on photo bulbs. Um, of course, material from Kodak. Here's one on how to mix and uh, use Kodak photographic chemicals. Um, processing chemicals and formulas for black and white photography, another Kodak guide. And the Kodak Master Photo Guide, which is um, a small sort of pocket guide to be used in the field, that's been used by photographers for decades, including myself when I was a young photographer. Now Martin, uh, besides producing portraits, this is a sort of typical uh, uh, portrait that we might see produced by a photographer of this type. The hand coloring was done by his wife. And occasionally the effects were quite painterly. Um, almost looks like a, um, uh, uh, a pastel. But Martin was also had artistic inclinations. And this is a print that he uh, produced and matted, um, uh, which would have been uh, shown in a, some sort of salon competition. So the camera club culture would have been still been very, very active in the 1950s and even in the 1960s. And as we've seen in the other cases, once again, the camera annuals um, are very important. And in the Martin collection, uh, we have a number of photo annuals. This is one called Gallery One which came out of London. Uh, it was related to another annual called Gallery, also out of London. And Rolly, the producer of the Roloflex cameras. This is um, the Rolly Yar book, or the Rolly annual. This is the first one from 1951. And these annuals, like the annuals we've seen in the other cases, 
produced or introduced a, a really wide range of photographs from sort of high quality snapshot type photography um, to art photography and of course in the back the ever popular technical section which explained how the works were produced. For the, this exhibition, probably there are two books that are most interesting and kind of raise this question of what was the sort of interaction between the art community and the commercial photo uh, community. And these two books uh, point up some very interesting sort of possibilities in terms of this interaction and sharing of literature. Walker Evans, American Photographs and William Morton's Pictorial Lighting. Now, Mortensen uh, produced a number of books on, uh, for the commercial photographer and advanced amateur. Uh, on the back cover, there's a, an advertisement for his projection control book. He produced a series of books like this. And if we look at the title page for his Pictorial Lighting book, we can see this highly stylized portrait um, that uh, sort of hints at the type of work that Mortensen was best known for. In stark contrast to Mortensen's pictorial lighting is Walker is the uh, 1962 reprint of Walker Evans American Photographs first released in 1938. Um, as we saw in the first case, there was a close relationship between Walker Evans and Robert Franks. What's interesting that Franks' book, American Photographs, finds its way into Oscar Martin's library in 1962 as a gift from his daughter. The sort of typical, very sort of frontal approach, uh, very straightforward using American vernacular architecture, the American vernacular landscape as a subject matter, is, as I said, a very stark contrast to the sort of very stylized productions of William Mortensen. Yet, both find their way into this library in Bloomington, Illinois. This raises a number of very interesting questions um, about the sort of interaction and, or interplay between the art community and the commercial and advanced amateur community that this exhibition doesn't hope uh, to try to answer but does want to raise the question in terms of this notion of the larger field of, a cultural, of cultural production. The Oscar Martin archive was a gift from his daughter, Patricia, for which we are very grateful. We hope you've enjoyed sh looking at the exhibition materials from our exhibition, More Than Robert Frank, the Americans, American Photography in 1960. We have additional materials available on our website, more streaming video, uh, photographic flipbooks, et cetera, for you to examine give you an introduction to the great collections that we have here at Stanford University. Thank you.